All right, so I hope that you're sitting down for this one because I'm not sure how to tell you this, but there's fighting in the Middle East. Yep, Israel and Palestine are going at it, you know, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, geez, it's been going so well over there, right? But nope, they're at it again, and this time it's personal. No, not for the people of Israel or Gaza, you know, because who gives a shit about them? It's personal for the CEO of the company of the state of Israel who stands to make, or perhaps lose, a whole lot of money over this little conflict that has just about as much to do with stealing land and giving it to others as westward expansion did. And it doesn't have that much to do with the apocalypse either, for that matter. Right? It's about lining the pockets of crooked politicians, royal families, and weapons manufacturers. Right? And I'll be the first to tell you that I don't like making videos about politics and things like this. Right? Politics is generally beyond my purview because because I tend to take politics even less seriously than I take my history. But when Mary told me that she thought she found the CEO of the company of the state of Israel, I just had to check that out, right? And so here we go. And so as most of these videos go, Mary and I were having some coffee talk, which tends to go all over the place. And of course, we talked a little bit about what's been happening in the land of Zion. When she mentioned that she has a contact in Israel, that sent her a webpage for the company of the state of Israel and that it had its headquarters in London. And so we joked about that for a minute and I asked her to send me the link and this is what happened. It's a link to the UK government's webpage that registers businesses. And this is what appears to be a notice of registration for the company of the state of Israel, I guess as a corporation or whatever, right? Its company number is OE027515. And so, of course, you know, I wanted to know what that added up to, right? And so this adds up to 20. And then I put the OE, which stands for Overseas Entity, in a Gematria calculator, and it gave me values of 55 or another 10, which would make a total value of 30, I guess, if you wanted, right? OE also gives us 120, which is a 3, and right? 3 times 20 is 60, or a 6, right? And so, and so the last one, the simple, makes a 20. So like 2020, perfect vision. Right? I think that's kind of amazing. Right? But but Gematria and the numbers game is not my strongest suit, or so I've been told. And, right? and so this webpage, which I will link to so you guys can do this for yourselves if, if you want, this supplies the company's application to register as an overseas entity in PDF form, which was filed on the 22nd of February, 2023. And just look at those twos. And since barcodes are the true mark of the beast, I ran this through a Gematria calculator as well. And the most interesting result was the Hebrew, Natch. <laughs> hey, but, you know, so, and so here we go with the application for an overseas entity corporation for the state of Israel, which as an overseas entity was, of course, incorporated in Israel under the Wonder Twin Power legal form of a state <laughs> and whose overseas entity's address is in London. And it's at two palace green which just so happens to be the israeli embassy in london and i think that's very interesting and even better is that it's only averaging three stars over 117 reviews and 117 that's a nine for those keeping score and three out of five stars they're not doing their best job out of the israeli embassy in london i guess <laughs> and so and so the application goes on to give us the due diligence agent details and I'm thinking there must not be a high standard of diligence due for these things, but you know, they tell us that the name of the person with overall responsibility for the company of the state of Israel is one Alexander Traeger Lewis. And it's interesting to see the name Lewis again so soon. And though this application doesn't specifically say he's the CEO of the company of Israel, but, but since he has overall responsibility, I'm calling him CEO until told otherwise. And so just who is Alexander Traeger Lewis. Why, he's a member of the European Jewish Parliament, born in London on August 9th, 1973. That's who. And did you know that there was a European Jewish Parliament? I didn't, but sure enough. But not to worry, it's a non-governmental organization whose aim is to be a uniting structure for, for all Jewish communities and organizations throughout Europe and to establish a permanent relationship with the European Parliament and other parliaments. Permanent relationship. So, forever. And I guess you could just screw non-parliamentary governments like the United States. Oh, 
Well, wait a minute. <laughs> and so, non-governmental, eh? I'm sure. And with this flag, 11 five-pointed stars and one six-pointed star. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the European Jewish Parliament, of course, was the brainchild of Ukrainian billionaire Vadim Rabinovich. So, you're telling me that there's a Ukraine connection to what's happening in Israel right now? You don't say. I'm shocked. Shocked by this. <laughs> and so, so more about Alex. He was born in London, but was apparently raised in Israel, where he attends J. Netanyahu Elementary and Charn Ikowski High in Netanya, Israel, before moving on to study law in London. Interesting to me that he's born in England, yet he serves in the Israeli Navy, on combat patrol boats, even. You know, and he attains the rank of Master Sergeant in the Israeli Navy. And this makes me think that he must have some sort of dual citizenship thing happening. But regardless, the company of Israel seems to have found the right man for the job. But who owns the company? Why, it's the Neset Kiryat ben Girion. That's the public authority beneficial owner. And this makes me wonder if there are non-beneficial owners. And the Neset is essentially the government of Israel, right? It's its Congress or Parliament or whatever. Collectively, I guess, they are the owner of the company of the state of Israel. And they put Alex in charge of managing its assets, is how I'm looking at this. And he may have been specifically bred for this job, because the name Traeger is German Ashkenazic for one who carries, or even better, legal guardian or guarantor. Are you kidding me? Can anyone out there work up a probability chart on this coincidence for me, please? Because this is just insane. And Lewis goes back to the ancient Welsh Llewellyn. So possibly an ancient Welsh nobility connection in there, right? And I believe Llewellyn stood for shining or bright. So he's the bright, shining guardian of the new company of the state of Israel. And he has his offices at, at 5 DeWalden Court, 85 New Cavendish Street, London. Not to be confused with Old Cavendish Street, right? Where Alex is a full partner in the law firm of C.H. Houseman and Company, which specializes in international law. So Alex is the company of the state of Israel's lawyer and not their CEO. Drat. <laughs> and, but I guess that would have been too convenient. <laughs> and so, and just as interesting, if not more interesting, is some of the other companies located at 5 to Walden Court. And so first up, we have AgRiver, whom our boy Traeger Lewis is associated with. And they're one of Israel's leading export companies specializing in agricultural products, especially flowers, herbs, and exotic fruits. Ooh la la. And this is interesting because they seem to import these things from India and Ethiopia. I looked at both these invoices and they're loaded with produce. All right, and here's just the first page of this one. Right? It is all chives. Thousands of pounds and thousands of dollars in chives. Right? So this Agriver company is very interesting. Right? This, this import-export thing is so very La Casa Nostra. And we also have Abigail Investments. Although they call themselves an investment firm, they really appear to be jewelers selling watches and jewelry and things. You know, I, I wonder who they're selling all this watches and jewelry to. And so also at 5 to Walden Court, we have the ICIJ Offshore Leaks Database, which contains information on more than 810,000 offshore entities, some of which are part of the Pandora Papers which were leaked financial documents that detail the offshore holdings of a former Prime Minister Tony Blair and everybody's favorite actor-turned-politician and hero, Ukrainian President Zelensky, among others. And this database also covers the leaked Paradise Papers, more than 13 million documents naming King Chucky III, his mom, U.S. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross, as well as exposing the offshore holdings of companies like Apple, Facebook, McDonald's, and Disney. It's hard to find a list of companies more responsible for the downfall of humanity than this. And all of this is being collected by the ICIJ, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, right in the same building as Abigail Investments, which is really a jeweler's selling diamonds and watches and stuff. <laughs> and Agriver, Israel's premier agricultural exporter that appears to get much of their product from Ethiopia and India. Why isn't the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists investigating that? And if the company of the state of Israel's lawyer is in the same building, maybe Israel is behind the ICIJ and all of these leaks. 
you know, like leverage anyone? Because there's also the possibility that H.C. Hausman is using its representative companies like AgRiver and Abigail Investments to launder some of Israel's dirty money. Because according to the due diligence agent details the UK government was so kind to share with us, Alex Traeger Lewis does not have an anti-money laundering number, which until someone tells me otherwise, means that Alex Traeger Lewis could be a money launderer. And what better way to keep an eye on the watchdogs than have them in your own house? And of course, all of this is complete apophenetic speculation. <laughs> and I doubt that this little investigation is exactly what Mary was hoping for. You know, because nothing I see here sort of proves to me that Alex Traeger Lewis has any sort of real power over Israel's affairs or that England owns the company of the state of Israel just because they registered as an overseas entity. Though it's certainly fun to speculate, just as it's fun to speculate about why the state of Israel needed to reincorporate itself in 2023, when it was essentially incorporated in 1948. And I think I found a possible reason for that. In 2020, the conservative Likud party, that's how I'm going to go with that, right? they regained control of the Neset, and they reinstated Netanyahu as prime minister in 2022. And of course, this is pure speculation. You know, I don't know what this means, but did they see something coming? Because it is interesting and coincidental that there's this shift in the balance of power in the Neset, in 2022, and then in early 23, Israel registers as a new offshore company in England. And then by harvest, there's full-on war with their neighbors? You know, I don't know. To me, it stands to reason that this company may be the big benefactors of said conflict with their neighbors. And it's also interesting to me that Israel is governed by political conservatives. The term national liberalism sounds like liberal Nazism to me. <laughs> Maybe it's this liberal Nazism coming out of Israel that has so many liberals in America siding with Hamas in this thing, right? Because in America, it seems that being Jewish is almost synonymous with being liberal. So it's very interesting to see this sort of tie change in America. All right, and I know that there's a lot more work to be done with this story, and maybe someone more qualified, someone better than me, will pick this up and, and do this story the justice it deserves. But to close this one out with a couple of cherries, all right, first, the good old U.S. of A., has also recently registered with England as an overseas entity. And they did so on January 19th of 2023. And unfortunately, they do not have the application PDF on this webpage, but they do list its UK address as 339 Elms Lane. 339? You know, what are the odds of that? <laughs> but, you know, in Mud City, it's just further evidence that America has never been independent of the crown. And so Israel may have never been either. And one final thing. Speaking of addresses, 5 to Walden Court is in London's West End, the theater district, and it's less than three miles from the Lycaeum, which possibly makes all of this the theater that Mud City has made it out to be all along. All right, remember, guys, just because you don't know the truth doesn't mean you can't have fun with the lies, right? So until the next one, cheers.